because we've talked about in the past how like there's lots of um mental health conditions that kind of overlap with each other and it feels almost like we are on the edge of a breakthrough in our yeah. understanding yeah where like we're like okay all these things kind of overlap and they kind of do, like these things like if you have this it kind of looks like you might also have yeah. this or you're likely to have this it feels like there's like another layer underneath yeah. it yeah, yeah that's yeah. causing all of these separate yeah. things or like a different model of our brains and our our, our own psych psychi- psychiatry and it's like psyches yeah. um that means that if we because it, it's a very confusing landscape yeah um almost like um when you have like a, a model of physics and obviously you can't ever compare uh, different sciences because they're operating at different levels yeah. but when you have a model in physics and you've got like well this thing doesn't quite fit and and this thing and this thing kind of do the same thing and yeah. and this this equation works up to this level and this equation works up to this level it's like well maybe there's something deeper yeah that is causing both of those two things and we're going to have a big breakthrough in our understanding yeah. and then figure out what the heck's going on i just think like a lot of it comes from trauma as well because you can't separate yeah. that but uh, it's, it's so weird because it's like it, it feels like you, we're trying to force people into these categories that they could actually fit into but there's always going to be what are those called those little diagrams the venn diagram. the, it's, like a, it's like a venn diagram <laughs> mm. yeah i think I, okay in defense of categories for a moment and we all know <laughs> that i'm that what i think of categories in defense of categories they are incredibly useful oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. i think what we've spoken about a lot on on the podcast is that categories are useful, but they're limited, you know. And mm. the only the, the only the point at which the categories become problematic is when we ignore the limitations and just try and use them for everything, right? Yeah. So, for example, having the category of male and female super bloody useful. I love that we're able to do that. I'm I'm very I'm very glad that we have the categories male, female, and intersex. Incredibly useful. However. There are limitations to yeah. using those categories sometimes. And if we ignore those limitations, then we end up just harming people and honestly getting worse results, yeah. right? Like it is it is absolutely useful to have the idea of autism, to have the idea of ADHD, to have the idea of depression and gender dysphoria and all of these things. Because it means we can sort of send targeted help to sort of people that need it. But when we, I guess when we start to think of these as absolute real definite things that yeah. totally exist, it's not, it, it's not quite as easy because brains are complicated and we don't understand brains yet. It's not quite as easy as like, like you were saying, you can't go in for a gender dysphoria screening and just have them <laughs> run a little scan on your brain and be like, oh, yeah. you got, you got the, the dysphoria, there it is. you got it, you know, like uh, an autism big string. sad face on the MRI scan. <laughs> <laughs> the gender section of the brain. And then yeah. when you go, when you call the person a boy, it smiles. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah. applies for all of them. Weird. Yeah. 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 They say there's like an autism center too. Yeah. It's like, you have autism, it just lights up. Yeah, like, I mean, people are complex, right? Like, and I mean, this kind of comes into it as well when we talk about sort of sexuality, right? This to sort of highlight this, this will really sort of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. We talk about sexuality, right? There are there are different sexuality labels. You've got gay, you've got bi, you've got straight, you've got asexual, you've got a whole host of other ones, and I'm not going to list them all out now because <laughs> it'll take you far can't. too long. It I can't. You can't. It's an endless list. As soon as I finish the list, someone will come up with another one yeah, to describe exactly. themselves specifically, <laughs> and that's fine, right? But two gay men are are not the same as each other. They could be attracted. So, for example, one gay man could be attracted very, very strongly to masculine men, right? Like very masculine men. And another gay man could be attracted to very feminine men. Now, you could also have genital preferences as well. Mm. Imagine if, for example, if one of them had a preference for a different genitalia than the other. They're both still gay and they both still very, very like neatly fall under the category we have of gay, which is you are a man like who men. is attracted <laughs> exclusively to other men. They, that's it. They're both gay, but they're both attracted to two completely different people, kinds of people, two different kinds of people. Where if you saw them on the street, you'd be you'd be like, these, this is why are we grouping these two together? Yeah. In terms of <laughs> sexuality, like because you know, sexuality to an extent can be based on aesthetics. So it's just you know, what I mean, like there are limitations to these sort of categories, and the response that people often have to that is, well, I'll just make another more specific category, you know, and they'll just they'll that's that's where we start getting sort of micro labels and all that stuff, and that is great for you know understanding yourself and to some extent getting people to have a very very specific understanding of what you're trying to um like 
of of sort of your interpretation of you know your identity it's great for that but ultimately at some point you know a, a micro label gets down to the point of just sitting down and explaining to someone exactly very specifically <laughs> who you're you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. i think a lot of the trouble as well is that because we because so much of our educational system is based upon categories mm. um and we're not as Chori and i go on about a lot we're not ever taught about we're not ever taught that we're being taught categories that aren't yeah. objectively true. Yeah. Um, you might be taught that at university if you know, even then. Okay. Well, anyway, it, <laughs> no. but my point is that if you then, if you think the world, if you, the, your brain, so much of your brain is then being sort of um, organized by categories and you start thinking of yourself in terms of categories. Yeah, yeah. And then when you do something or feel something that doesn't sort of, link up with your concept of yourself because your concept of yourself is based upon limited categories yeah, yeah. you feel this weird experience of like oh but that's not very me yeah that's not what i do despite the fact that that is exactly <laughs> what you're doing yeah. like like you can have feelings that aren't you be because they don't match up to the sort of data boxes you have mm. yeah, in your yeah. brain and i wish i just wish that someone had taught me at a much earlier age than me having to figure it out um, for myself, that these things aren't objectively real. They're just very helpful. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I built up an idea of myself that was yeah. based on categories. Yeah. You and like then fit I was yourself like, into just it. had all these feelings. I was like, I don't understand. That's not me. I don't. Yeah. Who am I anymore? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I think, you know, you mentioned earlier, Luke, that you can't compare between the sciences because they operate on different levels. And I want to touch on that again because I find it really interesting. Because Science categories are something that we have. Physics is different from chemistry, is different from biology. But n no, not really. Not like really. physics kind of becomes chemistry when like, matter and the specific properties of that matter become important. But ultimately, chemistry is just, it's just physics, isn't it? It's just, it's just a lot of physics. And mm. biology is just a lot of chemistry. Like, ultimately, not what, what really separates biology, like studying biology from studying chemistry. Like th th that's an actual question. What There's separates the study of those two? Different color exercise books. That, okay, that's true. Well, I'd say Other that than the exercise books, the chemistry biology is, is a subsection. Is a subsection of large chemistry where it's to do with mm -hmm. life and like organic matter and things like that. Whereas like, it's not to do with like you don't do the study of because if if biology is big chemistry, biology doesn't study large quantities of hydrochloric acid. Yeah, like really big quantities. It doesn't do that. So it's a specific part about organic life when i say big chemistry what i mean is not just <laughs> you know well, i don't mean <laughs> i don't mean fun. lots yeah. Of, yeah i don't mean like lots of a chemical yeah. i mean lots of chemistry lots of different chemical reactions yeah, so good. because what, life is just that's what i mean though is that if, if chem chemistry is big physics mm -hmm. and biology is big chemistry but chemistry being big physics chemistry doesn't do anything to do with like gravitation for example um or it doesn't not it. necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily. And then, and then physics, uh, biology doesn't do anything to do with some parts of chemistry. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. There's what I'm saying is that there is like strong overlap. So I did biotechnology, which is kind of biochemistry mixed with biochemical engineering, which is biology mixed with chemistry mixed with physics. Yeah. I was studying. Um, I was studying sort of big vats that you make, that you sort of grow bacteria in, let's say, right? You grow microorganisms in. Mm -hmm. And to study that, I need to study impellers, which are basically mixing systems. And to do that, I need to understand shear forces, which is just specifically physics. I don't just need to understand the forces in a liquid. I need to understand how the forces in a liquid impact a biological, like, like you know, a, a microorganism. And I also need to understand the chemistry of those microorganisms because that's incredibly important to making a product. If I want to make a product, you know, like let's say insulin or whatever, if I want to make whatever chemical, right? Not only do I need to understand the chemical properties of that product so that I can make sure that I can, you know, remove it, separate it from, you know, the rest of the stuff at the end, I also need to understand the biological properties of the thing that I'm using to make it so that I can make this microorganism produce whatever product I want, whilst also paying attention to all the physics to make sure I don't kill the microorganism. My point is that like any sort of, when we sort of separate out the sciences, that is those categories, they, they, they make sense and it's useful, but there's so much overlap and we tend to think of things in a very like sort of, this is biology, this is chemistry, this is physics. But when you study certain things, you bring, you've got to bring them all together. You know what I mean? Like we separate out these disciplines, but Ultimately, we're all kind of studying the same sort of thing, you know? You can join us next week for our new episode, The Physics of Being Transgender. <laughs> <laughs>